In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Probably many of us as children dreamed of finding a secret treasure map in some old chest, maybe discovering it in the corner of the loft, and then following it to find some buried treasure left a long time ago, but still waiting to be found. That kind of thing, unfortunately, doesn't happen in reality, not really in England these days. But back in ancient times, it wasn't so uncommon for someone to choose to bury treasure. There weren't banks and that kind of thing. So if you had to quickly run away from your house because of some invading army or a natural disaster, you might well bury the most expensive things that you owned, hoping to return back someday. The gospel that we heard, uh, then it begins with a story that would not have appeared as like a fairy tale to the audience, because people did come across buried treasure in our Lord's time. Of course, it was rare, but it wasn't something in legends and just imaginary. The treasure in the field is something the person stumbles across, but something which promises to totally change their life for the better. And this is how our Lord chooses to describe the experience of finding the kingdom of heaven. What is it like experiencing the Catholic faith for the first time? What is it like becoming a Catholic if we see it like Jesus does? If we correctly appreciate it, we understand it is like coming across a great treasure when you never expected it. One which will change your life and which all that you have in your life, uh, all that you've done in your life up to that point, hardly matters. You can get rid of it all just in order to have this treasure. Now, most of us here were probably baptized as Catholics as babies. So probably we didn't naturally go up, grow up with the idea that we had inherited an immense treasure. So the parable should make us stop and reconsider what I have, what I have inherited. It's frightening how many ex-Catholics there are and lapsed Catholics. And in each case, you are dealing with people who grew up with this treasure, literally in their front garden, not hidden in some faraway field. But they never appreciated it. They never opened up the box, never delighted in its contents. So I thought maybe this morning we would open up that box and remind ourselves of the secret treasures contained within. So first of all in this in this treasure chest we find the gemstone of infallible truth. Our Catholic faith offers us an infallible certainty about who God is, what God has done for us, and what we need to do to save our souls. What a precious treasure. As Catholics, we don't live in confusion about what's right and wrong, what's a sin and what pleases God. We have the treasure that all others would envy if they knew that we had it. You might not know this, but there are so many Protestants that sit around with their Bibles arguing and debating. Is this a sin? Is that a sin? Does Jesus teach this? Does Jesus teach that? That was never God's plan. Finding the Catholic faith, the faith Jesus founded, entering the kingdom of heaven, is like finding this treasure, the treasure of security, having the infallible church as our guide, so we can be certain to the answer about all the most important questions. Also in this treasure chest, we find the gemstone of forgiveness. At the root of so much depression in our society and so many messed up lives is the inability to receive forgiveness. But in the Catholic Church, we have this wonderful treasure of being able to have burdens lifted from our lives. The sacrament of baptism frees you from the stain of original sin, and if you're baptized as an adult, it washes away 
all the sins up to that point in your life. The sacrament of confession does the same for the sins after we've been baptized. Of course, small sins are forgiven by an act of contrition, but mortal sins should be mentioned in confession. But what a great blessing, relief, and treasure this is. You probably might not realize this, but so many non-Catholics long for those words of absolution that are given in confession. Maybe they commit a serious sin and probably eventually they get on their knees and say sorry. But they have no idea if they are really forgiven. And they stress about this and worry about this. I've even, when I was at the hospital, I even saw people coming to the end of their life still worried about a sin many years ago because they didn't have confession. How wonderful is the great treasure of absolution that not only gives forgiveness, but gives a moral certainty of it. And of course, if I were to keep tr um, looking through this box of treasures of our faith, I could go on for ages. The gift of the motherhood of Our Lady, of the miracles of the incorrupt saints, of the wisdom in the teaching of the saints and theologians and popes. But if I was to mention just one more treasure, that would be the treasure of finding Jesus himself physically present in the Blessed Sacrament. Probably, if one thing from our Catholic faith could be seen as the pearl of great price, it would be the Blessed Sacrament. Across the centuries, how many countless martyrs have been willing to lay down their lives in defense of this truth, out of love for this truth? Our lives should also be marked by a manifest dedication to this great pearl, this treasure, which is Jesus himself. Not a piece of bread, but Jesus. No signs of gratitude or devotion are sufficient for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, having God physically here with us. Of course, if you think about the parable, when the merchant is described as selling all he has to buy the pearl, it's ultimately because he knows he can sell the pearl for an even greater profit. But for us, Jesus in Holy Communion has an intrinsic and infinite value as something we should never be willing to trade. What a great joy it is to uncover the treasure that is our Catholic faith. Perhaps it has in a sense, lay hidden in your life. Maybe for a time you didn't attend to it or appreciate it. Our Lord is today inviting you to realize that your Catholic faith is more than some routine or habit, something you receive from your parents or some kind of hobby. It is worth everything. Amazing. It's like if you stack all of your possessions and achievements and all the human things that you love dearest on one side, it doesn't match the treasure of the faith on the other side. But to discover that changes everything. And you know, hundreds of thousands of adults become Catholics every year when they discover the treasure of the Catholic faith, particularly the three treasures I mentioned. The first treasure, the infallible truth of Christ, preserved in the Catholic Church, which offers certainty amidst all the chaos and confusion of our world. Confusion about who Jesus is. Confusion about what's right and wrong. Confusion even about what defines us as male and woman, male and female. Confusion about what we have to do to please God, how to make it to heaven. The second treasure, the treasure of forgiveness, of certain forgiveness, of being able to make a fresh start and to be unburdened of our sins and regrets, and then to have the peace that comes from a good conscience. And the third treasure, the treasure of Jesus himself in our tabernacles, the physical presence of Jesus, whom so many love and admire and read about in the Bible, his physical presence to feed our souls, to nourish us with his graces, so that we can grow towards the life of heaven, and even begin to taste that life on earth. Jesus depicts the kingdom of God 
being a member of the Catholic Church as a pearl of great price. And the amazing thing is, we have it. Most of us were born with this in our front gardens, in our possession. The revolution that Jesus wants to bring about in us is for us to come to appreciate this, the faith as this immense and invaluable treasure. How different my life would be if it reflected this attitude. If I could see my faith as a longed for treasure, as the treasure that I'm always searching for in a thousand ways, as an answer to my deepest needs and desires. Lord Jesus, help me to discover the beauty and truth of my Catholic faith as if it were for the first time. Give me the grace to appreciate the tremendous gift that you have given to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.